This actually started out um, as a student research project. So I'm a biostatistician here at ClinVest Research. Um, I'm also an assistant professor at Missouri State University in Springfield. And we had a couple of audiology students wanting to um, complete their dissertations or thesis. I think it's for their AUDs. And they came to me because they knew that I was a person for research design. Um, and so we had the connection between me working here at ClinVest at Missouri State. So we had the migraine piece and the um, audiology piece. Um, and so we decided, hey, like, what can we look at to bridge those two things? And based on research that we read, we saw a lot of research was based on qualitative measures via subjective report. And so we thought it would be interesting, what other questions can we answer uh, if we use more quantitative objective measures? Taking a look into the research, we saw that that hadn't really been approached too much. Um, there is one measure known as uncomfortable loudness levels. Um, and that's basically where participants will sit and listen to typically pure tones, sometimes can be speech sounds uh, across varying frequencies and sound intensities. Um, and across each frequency, the sounds get louder and louder and louder. And when it's too uncomfortable, so that uncomfortable loudness, they just raise their hand and they say, oh, I can't handle this anymore. So we looked at that and we found that compared to controls, individuals with migraine were experiencing reduced thresholds, meaning they couldn't handle sounds as loud or as intense as a healthy control, a person without migraine. We expected that during the migraine visit because we actually had participants come in during migraine. But before that, we had them come in during a pain-free baseline. And what was really interesting is we actually found significant differences between the migraine group and the control group at baseline as well. So even when they're not experiencing a migraine, they still had that reduced threshold. Um, the really, my favorite part of this was another measure that we used is called the acoustic reflex threshold. And I have not seen this used um, to study migraine at all. I could be wrong but in my literature review, I didn't come across it. And um, what that is, it's a purely objective measure, meaning it's based only on physiological response. No, there's no subjective report. And what that measure looks at is the stapedius muscle in the middle ear. And the stapedius muscle works, um, it will contract when there's a sensory overstimulation, basically. So it works to protect from loud noises, say, will protect the whole audi auditory system by contracting. And so we did not see any differences between our control and um, migraine groups during baseline, but during a migraine attack, you would think that that muscle would contract earlier, like so at lower levels because they have that reduced uncomfortable loudness level threshold, right? So they're not able to handle sounds that are as loud. So you would think, oh, that should be contracting earlier than the control group. But actually what happens is it takes lot, uh, larger intensities, greater intensities in order to get that muscle to contract in the migraine groups. So they're almost mirror images of each other. Um, and that's basically telling us, hey, there is something not only psychological um, and subjective. So these people are reporting um, hypersensitivities, but this can be seen physiologically and objectively within uh, the body.